All right, today we're going to recap the Louisiana Derby. It was won by the first time blinkered, fourth time starting, Todd Pletcher trained, Noble Indy. They went fast early in the Louisiana Derby. The fractions were 22 and 4, 46 and 3 for the half. And Noble Indy was up close to it, but he, he was handled beautifully by Johnny Velasquez through the early stages of the race. He broke from post position too. Um, a hopeless maiden, a hundred to one shot maiden who, who got the lead going five and a half furlongs early in its career, uh, was positioned in post three. Velasquez let the horse go, relaxed Noble Indy, maneuvered his way out, got that, got a very comfortable outside stalking trip with no pressure, no one pushing him to his outside. It was just, uh, you, you know, in an isolated comfort zone. He inherited the lead um, and around the far turn uh, when the hopeless long shot faded. You see him two lengths in front there. He was passed by two deep closers. Lone Sailor, and this was a field of 10. Lone Sailor was ninth of 10 at the first call. And my boy Jack was 10th and last at the first call. My boy Jack actually lost contact with the field early. So Noble Lindy was passed by both of those horses. Came on, came on again through, you know, a deep stretch and won. Uh, Velasquez said in a post-race interview, he, you know, this horse was first-time blinkers. He said he didn't think, uh, he didn't see these horses until they kind of got past him, you know, and then he dug in real gamely and battled back up the fence uh, to get the win. So um, with all that said, we're going to go watch a replay of the race. We'll do that now. All right, post position two is going to be Noble Indy. He's your eventual winner. Post position eight is going to be Lone Sailor, your eventual second place finisher. And post position nine is going to be my boy Jack, your eventual third place finisher. Uh, before I run this, uh, and I'll let the announcer take it away, and then we'll go through it at various stages after that. Uh, but before I run this tape, um, uh, watch the job Johnny V does of... Uh, of getting, first of all, getting Noble Indy to relax early and then maneuvering him outside of this three horse, this hopeless long shot. He does a great job of it, as you'll see. And also, note the one Bravazo, uh, how much trouble he had cornering around both turns. You're going to see the one horse Bravazo actually help Velasquez um, maneuver his way out into a perfect spot, um, a perfect spot not factoring, you know, the fact that he was up near a fast pace, but he was in a, you know, Johnny B got himself in a very comfortable spot. But watch Bravazo. He, he's he's not going to handle the first turn very well. And he, you know, he, he practically almost bolts the second turn. So uh, Gary Stevens, you know, had his hands full with, uh, with Bravazo. They might have to change up some equipment there. But um, with all that said, you know, I'm going to be quiet here. I'll run it. I'll let you guys watch the replay. Orleans crowd is ready. They're in the gate. And they're off on the Twinspires.com Louisiana Derby. Retirement fund broke well for the inside. First time blinkered Noble Indy in the orange cap. And Marmello, the maiden in their midst, is vying for the early pace with Noble Indy, who's keen as they head toward the first turn. The Risen Star winner, Bravazzo, in third position. Retirement fund joined out wide by Snapper Sinclair, who's floated out to the five path as they round the first turn. Give me a minute saving ground, then Heinford to the inside lone sailor. Dark Templar is posted three wide, and my boy Jack is in the back of the pack. The opening quarter, 22.97 seconds, and the leader is Marmello for Jack Gilligan. Marmello out in front at those astronomical odds with five furlongs to go. Noble Indy. Right there, shadowing the front runner for John Velasquez. It's Marmelo, Noble Indy. Bravazo is in the clear on the outside. The Louisiana bred. Give me a minute closer toward the rail, running in fourth. Snapper Sinclair is fifth and sixth from the front. Lone Siller gains toward the inside. Retirement fund in tight quarters between horses. Some seven for the lead. The trailers are Heinford and wide. Dark Templar has dropped back to tenth. A half mile in 46.61 seconds. Noble Indy took the lead as Marmelo's dropped back. Three furlongs to go. It's Noble Indy who leads by two and a half. 
to give me a minute. Snapper Sinclair in the red cap is now gaining ground. Bravazo needs to pick up on the foot outside. Lone Sailor starts to gain. Here's Lone Sailor's bid. My boy Jack is the wide out for Kent DeSormo. Then Heinford into the stretch. Three quarters and one minute, 11.47 seconds. Stay inside is my boy Jack. My boy Jack is coming with a long run. Lone Sailor looks to battle. My boy Jack. In the final furlong, Noble Indy toward the inside. Give me a minute, then Snapper Sinclair. It's Lone Sailor, Noble Indy, my boy Jack. Toward the rail, Noble Indy and Lone Sailor, Noble Indy to win the Louisiana Derby from Lone Sailor in a photo finish. My boy Jack loomed at the quarter pole, was third. Give me a minute, Snapper Sinclair. We trail back to Heinford with retirement fund. Not today for Bravazo, Dark Templar, and Mamarlo, who led in the early stages. Mormello was last home. Okay, now let's go over some points of emphasis in this replay here. You see um, uh, Johnny V here on uh, Noble Indy. He, he's outside this hopeless 100-to-1 shot. He's got a firm hold. He's trying to relax him, trying to get outside of this horse. But this was very key to him getting this perfect position. Um, and that was Gary Stevens on the one Bravazo. Uh, watch Bravazo uh, have trouble cornering going into the first turn run it here. Here's Bravazo and the black silks. He's black silks with the chevron. He's he's getting out. He forced Snapper Sinclair, you know, about five wide and you know, that made it extremely easy uh, for Velasquez to just um, you know slide right to the outside. And now Johnny V's in a perfect spot here. I mean he's got um you know yes they're going very fast and yes the the race shape favors closers. But he's, he's loaded with horse. His horse is very comfortable. There's no one out here pushing him. Um, you, you know, you see this horse's ears going back and forth, just waiting for his cue. He's going to inherit the lead from this hopeless 100-to-1 shot. Now, you're going to watch Bravazo here. Watch Bravazo in the black silks with the chevron. He's going to have trouble cornering again. Watch Gary Stevens have to practically stand up here. Right there. You see, see that right there with Stevens? Go back again. Okay, the, the one horse that's three wide in the black silks. Right there, that move that Stevens makes. Um, so, uh, Bravazo, there might be a, a, there might be a little equipment issue with him. Something uh, that can get solved to help him handle turns better. Now, my boy Jack, who was just completely let, – let's watch my boy Jack here. Um, you know, he's going to lose contact with this field early. He's in the, you know, the blue colors. He's got the blue, blue, saddle, to, blue saddle towel and blue silks, and he's just way out of it. I mean, this pace is really suiting him, 22 and 4. Things are setting up for him from a pace standpoint. Um, when he won the Southwest – uh, he got a, just a, like a Calvin Burrell type ride. DeSormo got an unmolested rail run. I mean, the fence opened up and he shot through it in the fence. It looked like Street Sense or Mind That Bird or Super Saver. It went in the Kentucky Derby, the kind of rides that Burrell uh, gave um, those horses were the kind of ride that uh, my, my boy Jack got in the Southwest win. Um, he flew up the fence. This time he, he had to, you know, veer out and try to mow these horses down the center of the track. You see, still not even in the screen. Here comes my boy, Jack. Now, DeSormo's absolutely flying here. He's got to tip him. I mean, he's going to be fanned out about eight, nine wide turn and throw. He's way out there. I wish I could see it on the head on, uh, but you would think with this head of steam uh, that my boy, Jack, would probably go by. He hung like a chandelier here. He just did not want to go by. Um, now, Fairgrounds is a rail-friendly track, but um, my boy Jack, you know, he, he looked like he was going to just come sweeping past and, you know, made that huge turn move, and you, you see him hang a bit here. Um, watch, uh, we'll watch uh, Noble Wendy through the stretch. Um, he actually gets passed, and uh, Velasquez says he, that he, 
he felt that as though Noble Wendy didn't see these uh, two closers come. And once they got past him and Noble Wendy could see them, is when he dug back in. So Noble Wendy looks almost like a beaten horse here on the inside. Now, the rail is generally good at fairgrounds. Um, I'm a big fan of the inside path at fairgrounds, to be honest. But it, Noble Wendy here, it looks beat. But this is where, you know, he, he finally starts to see this horse going by him. He digs in bravely. Uh, this is a gutty performance by Noble Wendy. Yes, you know, he, he got into a comfortable trip. I, I would say, you know, his trip was a very comfortable one. For him, I mean, they, they went too fast early, and he was right up on that pace, but he was comfortable doing it. So if that makes any sense to you, um, and you see Noble Indy, he galloped that well. Uh, we talked about him in our handicapping preview as a horse we really liked. We saw him train. He um, he worked in the blinkers. It was a, his March 10th workout, and it was just a dazzling workout. Uh, Pletcher hooked him up. Uh, in company with uh, with an older horse who was, you know, a very, very fast older horse, a horse who you would not expect Noble Wendy to win, you know, a, a heads up morning drill with. And um, Noble Wendy just dusted him. So um, there were some very encouraging signs that Noble Wendy was doing very, very sharply coming into this race. And you, you saw him, um, he was the only horse that survived the pace. Um, there were some excuses for uh, Bravazzo did not corner well. There may be a, some equipment issues. You know, he didn't look too happy around the turns. Um, you know, Lucas could, uh, you know, he'll have to go to work on that. Uh, Snapper Sinclair did get uh, floated out about four or five wide through the first turn when Bravazzo was struggling to corner. So uh, Snapper Sinclair, you know, it's when you're raising, when you're running at the fairgrounds, you're five wide around the first turn and up that close to a fast pace. I mean, you're, you have every right to flatten like a pancake. And yes, he did flatten like a pancake. Um, you know, he, he didn't run well at all, but, uh, to me, I, I, I would, uh, you know, I, I would think that he's going to run a lot better next time with more reasonable circumstances. You knew going in that the pace was not going to favor him this time. He almost stole the prep for this at 41 to one when they let him have, you know, a slow pace. So anyway, that was, um, that was, you know, a, a breakdown of what happened from a trip handicapping standpoint in the race. Now uh, let's go talk about a couple of these horses as it relates to the Kentucky Derby. And the interesting horse to me is my boy, Jack. Okay, the reason why I want to talk about my boy Jack as it relates to the Kentucky Derby uh, is that he fits the perfect profile of what you would call the underneath horse um, for, for the Derby. There's been, a, you know, a slew of horses in recent editions of the Derby who are just one-dimensional closers like my boy Jack is, who just so happened to run the absolute race of their life in the Derby. These horses seldom win, but but they tend to get a piece at long shot odds. And uh, my boy Jack, you know, we'll go through the, the list of them here, but my boy Jack uh, compares very favorable to them. And the reason why, um, you know, this is so important to point out uh, now is because this year's Derby, there's a lot of talent in the race. The horses that are going to be bet all have virtually the same running style. They're horses that are, uh, you know, tractable speed horses. So there's going to be someone in there that, that sets the pace. There'll be some, you know, maybe a horse like Promises Fulfilled who goes to the lead and sets a fast pace. But you have all these alpha tractable speed horses, you know, horses like um, McKenzie, Bull Dioro, obviously Justify, Magnum Moon, Noble Indy. The, the, there's just too many of those horses. Um, and what happens, what always happens is that, you know, pressure can burst a pipe. And there's going to be so much pressure up in the front end in the Derby. you got a mile and a quarter race, the whole field carrying 126 pounds. And all those alpha horses who are used to, you know, having things their own way, you know, are, are, are going to be, you know, positioned very close to a horse um, 
you know, to a, to a bunch of horses who are very similar to them. Uh, you know, Justify's obviously never been anything with, never been in there with a horse like Bolt the Oro. And you got Bolt the Oro, McKenzie. All, what, what ends up happening is that a horse like my boy Jack, who just um, switches off from the early stages and finds himself way out of the race, it always comes with a, a you know, a, a rally through the stretch to get a piece. And, you know, the dominant alpha horses, um, you know, once they're beaten, they're going to come off the bridle. It doesn't matter how good they are, how classy they are. In the Derby, um, one of them usually goes on and wins, and then, uh, you know, the rest of them tend to get fried. And that opens the door for, you know, a one-dimensional closer who just shuts off early to come flying late to get a piece. So uh, we'll, we'll look at such a horse last year, my boy Jack. You know, you see, he ran in the Southwest. He, he was, you know, a mile out of it early. He ended up getting, you know, finishing third, beating 12 lengths. Well, you know, you see my boy Jack up here won the Southwest in the mud with a big close. You know, the Arkansas Derby, uh, looking at Lee was, you know, way out of it, close for third. These are very similar horses. Uh, my, my boy Jack's actually, you know, got superior form. They've got identical running styles. My boy Jack has superior form. Now, looking at Lee did get a... Uh, the, the rail was good, and you see Dream inside trip to a, to the eighth pole. So you know he, he had some racing luck, but I mean, look what looking at Lee's done since then. These horses, by the way, never run good in the Belmont. You see, he was bet to six to one in the Belmont. People always see them close in the Kentucky Derby and think they're going to run better in the Belmont. Well, the Belmont does not favor one dimensional closers. It's a race where you got to have some tactical speed. And these horses just get galloped into submission in the Belmont. You'll see a pattern here, but looking at Lee's case, six to one, nothing. And he's never really done anything uh, since that miraculous second in the Kentucky Derby where he closed from 17th. So that's one horse. We'll, we'll go through the comparisons now to, to the rest. Okay, here's a commanding curve. You see, he, was, he ran in the 2014 Kentucky Derby here. He was second at 37 to 1 odds. California Chrome was the horse who beat him. In the second beat in the length of three quarters, the California Chrome. Uh, look, look at the type of form he had coming in. He's just another one dimensional closer. You can see he ran in the, the Louisiana Derby, was his final prep before the Kentucky Derby. It was a 10 horse field. He was last at the first call, last at the second call. Finished third, beaten five lengths, only got an 87 figure. Um, you know, the, we're at the same stage in uh, my boy Jack's form. He ran a, a much, much, much uh, better third in the Louisiana Derby. Got a better number. You know, you see a uh, commanding curve. Um, and, and, you know, never run too fast, never run impressive. He was a distant sixth in the Risen Star, beaten eight and a quarter to intense holiday. But he, he had the style, you know, just a one-dimensional. He was 18th early in the Kentucky Derby, 19-horse field, only had one beat. Even after six furlongs, still only had one beat. You know, uh, you always had them alpha speed and alpha presser horses in the Derby. They go a mile and a quarter carrying 126. They get stirred up in the pre-race. I mean, it just sets up for this type of one-dimensional closer. And then people see them, oh, wow, he, 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 you know, he was 18th by 12 early in the Derby, and he rallied to be a fast closing second to California Chrome at a mile and a quarter. Oh, he'll do great in the Belmont. People all, you know, often get sucked into these type of horses, and you see 8-1 to one in the Belmont, and he was, you know, ninth beaten over a dozen lengths. So, and, you know, just like um, looking at Lee before him, I mean, his after career was awful. I mean, he was just, um, you know, was never he was never anything too special before the Derby, and he certainly wasn't anything too special after the Derby. Uh, but he did run second at thirty-seven to one in the Derby, and he did so because of the dynamics of the race. Um, you know, the race just sets up for these one-dimensional closers. 
uh, you, you know, they can get the, they can switch off early. They can get the distance, and um, you know, all they got to do is show up, show up on that day, and you know, run their type of race, and they they always you know dramatically outrun their odds. So um, that's commanding curve. We're gonna we're gonna do our next comparison, but I mean, clearly you can see my boy Jack exact same style, but a lot more horse coming in. Anyway, moving along. All right, here's Golden Soul. He was the second place finisher in the 2013 Kentucky Derby. 34 to 1. Take a look at his form coming into the race. Just another completely one-dimensional closer. You know, he run in the Le Compte. He got beat 11 and a half lengths by Oxbow, the future previous winner in the Le Compte. He run in the Risen Star Stakes at the fairgrounds. He was 6 to 34 to 1. Now, the Louisiana Derby, his final prep uh, for the Kentucky Derby was the same race where my boy Jack prepped in. It was a 14-horse field. He was dead last early, beaten 13 at the first call. And Golden Soul was dead last at 14 and 18 lengths out of it at the second call. Now, we watched my boy Jack lose contact with the field, and he wasn't even anywhere near as far off the pace as uh, Golden Soul was. And, of course, Golden Soul, he, he got within three lengths, made a, you know, a similar wide-sweeping, you know, big move through the turn and, you know, kind of hung, ended up getting beat four and three-quarter lengths, almost five lengths as, in a fourth-place finish. You know, he'd never run a better figure than 88. You see my boy Jack's clearly eclipsed that in his last two races. So, uh, once again, same one-dimensional closing running style. Of course, it can just shut it down early, you know, just bide his time. And then he can give you this instant push-button response on the turn as horses, you know, are kind of beginning to hit the recess button, reset button and tend to quit. So, he, you know, you see he runs the race of his life in the Kentucky Derby, a great second never approaches anything like that the rest of his career comes back in the belmont you know 11 to 1 people kind of you know they see him close he, he, nowhere in the belmont i mean just two completely different uh, dynamics to those two races and then you could see his after career i mean he was just uh you know another one of these horses here that people were like how ever did how did that horse run second in the kentucky derby i don't get it you know, people say is he's, you know, um, you know they're running him on the grass a mile and three quarters on the grass, and he ends up going to the UAE, and he just can't can't buy a win. I mean, uh, but he, he runs second in the Kentucky Derby because you know the he had the right style for the race. Um, you know, he could shut off early, could could you know relax way out of it. You know, those alpha horses, there's usually a couple this year. There's you know, about six or seven just, you know, very, very talented horses that press the pace. And um, only one of those horses usually uh, survives into the lane. And, you know, the rest of them, um, when they're finally beaten, I mean, it's, uh, you know, they stop and horses like this. You know, come and get all but one of them. You know, California Chrome uh, did, didn't, um, you know, commanding curves case and, uh, or the favorite one here. But anyway, that's Golden Soul. Let's continue. Okay, here's um, Icebox. He was uh, second in the 2010 Kentucky Derby. Um, you see, you know, he run in the Fountain of Youth, got beat 12 lengths, buried by Escondre. He was 45 to 1. You know, he was dead last early. You know, one-dimensional closer, same type of deal. He actually won the, the Florida Derby, and, and he did it. They went too fast early. They went 46-2, and 110-3, and three, got up the win by a nose, swung out just up, ran a 99. This might be the first horse who you can argue uh, might have had a form as good or better than my boy Jack will coming into the Derby. Now, both of them have this one-dimensional closing style, but Icebox did have a race here in the Florida Derby where he won. He got a little better number. Anyway, he's 19th by 21, 19th by 24. He's a mile out of it, 24 lengths out, steadied, blocked, steadied. 
he had all kinds of trouble weaving through the traffic. But, he, you know, he was second in the Kentucky Derby. Of course, comes back in the Belmont. They bet him to nine to five favoritism in the Belmont in hand fault or did the same thing. It's, you know, just completely, you see him go 49 for a half here. Just completely different dynamics. I mean, a one-dimensional closer is is going to run, outrun their odds and run sneaky good in the Kentucky Derby just because all those, you know, uber-talented, you know, alpha tactical speed type horses all get, you know, they all face their own. They all face horses from different regions who are their same, uh, you know, similar types and you know, one of them usually, uh, you know, one of them sees it out. Um, but a horse like this, Icebox, you know, he shuts off early, relaxes, could come with a big move. I mean, he, he had all kinds of traffic issues. That's why they beat him the favorite in Belmont. And you see here, I mean, he was never optional claiming. You know, couldn't even win that. They gunned him. It says gunned from the gate. I mean, they, they actually tried to put him on... Uh, you know, they run them an optional claiming allowance and gunned them. And, you know, there's just nothing they can do. I mean, but he, he was, again, a mile and a quarter at Churchill in the Breeders' Cup Classic grinding type race. He didn't go fast enough for him, 47 and 4, 112 and 4. But still, I mean, he, run, he only got beat four lines, so it was, a, you know, a useful type of race. So, uh, anyway, Icebox, another horse. Fits the profile that my boy Jack fits. One-dimensional closer in the Kentucky Derby. You see second. You know, he was only 11 to 1. The other ones were all just gigantic long shots. But um, that's Icebox will continue along. Okay, here's Steppenwolf. Now, he, he we, we showed a bunch who were second, but I thought I'd show this one. You know, he was third to uh, Barbaro, the mighty Barbaro. Um, and Steppenwolf, you know, same type of horse, one-dimensional uh, closer. Um, you know, the, the thing, he had some pretty, uh, you know, you see at a 94 is his top number coming in. 94, my boy Jack does. Uh, the thing that was kind of interesting about him, you see they bet him to 4-1 to in the Belmont. He flattened out. He finished his career running hurdle races. He ran in a maiden special, maiden special weight steeplechase when I, uh, you know, Camden and Saratoga there, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't much of a hurdle horse. Um, but he, you know, he, he had the right style. He was doing okay coming into the Derby. Um, run third, bet him to nine to two. He was almost favorite in this bell one. I think the favorite went off four to one and he went off at nine to two, but you see, I mean, he couldn't, he couldn't win another race after the, Derby. They run him optional claimer on turf. They tried all different kinds of things. Ran him on synthetic, synthetic turf, dirt hurdles. Tried to sprint him. I mean, anything you could think of, but just had the right running style. He was underneath in the Derby. Um, he was sixteen to one. Of course, with um, you know the identical type of style to my boy Jack, and uh, not too dissimilar on ability. And another horse who I thought I'd compare him to, this will be the last one I'll do, but I mean, this is another, you know, same type of uh, running style horse that reminded me, you know, a lot of my boy Jack in terms of running style. I think my boy Jack had a little more ability than this one. But this is, you know, when Todd Pletcher's, uh, one. Of the, I think this was one of the first horses he ever hit the board with in the Kentucky Derby, but this is impeachment. You know, you see, he ran in the Sam Davis when it was only a thirty-five thousand dollars stake in Tampa. Um, he was twenty lengths out of it. I'm completely lost contact with the field. Twenty out of it at the first call. Twenty out of it at the second call. You know, ended up uh, staying on to be fourth, beating six and a quarter, made up a good margin of ground. You know, but just kind of flattened out through these through the final uh, call here. So. We come back in the Tampa Derby, 10 horse field, last early. You know, ends up running second. Goes to the Arkansas Derby, 14 horse field. I mean, completely loses cost, 17 lengths out of it. Ends up third in the Arkansas Derby. Um, you know, was 34 to 1. 
he was considered such a hopeless long shot that they put him in the mutual field. This is when I, I believe they had the mutual field for 2000, or maybe he was a coupled entry. I'd have to go look at the charts, but impeachment would have been extremely long odds on his own in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, but you see, you know, he was nine, 19th by 20. He was dead last beaten 20, dead last beaten 22. And, you know, he came up rallying along to get a piece. Um, finish third in the race. You know, the, the Preakness a lot of times is run similar to the Belmont. For, some, for whatever reason, a lot of times trainers will actually want to skip the Preakness uh, with these horses that make up a huge amount of ground in the Derby and go right to the Belmont. So, I mean, I, I don't mean to pick on the betters here because even the trainers of these horses always get fooled with these type of horses that make up, you know, huge, vast amount of grounds in the Derby. They, they want to, you know, skip the Preakness and go to the Belmont. You know, Pletcher, Todd Pletcher is honestly a very, very sharp trainer. I mean, very uh, studious trainer. And you know, he went right to the Preakness. Horse was third. Um, you know, then came back in the Belmont. You see six to one. And this is what usually happens to these, you know, horses with this kind of style in the Belmont. You know, people think more ground helps, but I mean, that race just isn't. You know, deep closing races, 49 and one, it's, you know, it's more of a, you know, a steady gallop type race. So, and that was the end for impeachment. But I know I showed you a lot of horses here uh, who run second or third in the Derby. And, you know, they had kind of um, um, unaccomplished, relatively unaccomplished careers going into the race. And then after the race, I mean, you, they couldn't win a race to save their life after the Derby. Um, but, my boy Jack, he's in my opinion, he's as at least as talented as these other horses, and he has just you know the identical feel to these horses, the identical running style. This isn't a horse who who I would be that interested in on the win end of my betting for the Kentucky Derby, but I want him included in all my exotics. I mean, he's just gonna. You know, he'll be back there switched off. You know, you'll have Justify and McKenzie and Bull Dioro, Magnum Moon, all these, you know, very talented horses up there. Um, you know, they, they all want to be in the hunt. Noble Indy, you saw how aggressive he was early. He was just cruising through 22 and 4. I mean, Velasquez had a tight hold and really had to work to get him settled. So uh, my, my boy Jack is just that rare horse. Um, you know, that can switch himself off. Um, you know, he, he'll he'll drop way out of it. Um, when DeSormo asks, he'll give him a run. He can, you see up here, he can dart up the rail, which is very important for, like, maneuvering through traffic. They didn't try to do that here in the Louisiana Derby. They tried to tip him down the, the center of the track, and, you know, he, he hung. Uh, but my boy Jack has underneath exotic appeal in the Kentucky Derby. I just really striking hits me over the head as the type of horse, um, you know, who, who runs second at a big price in the race. And we always, you know, say, how the hell did that horse run second? And, you know, and in subsequent races, you know, the, the horse always kind of, you know, reverts back to its old form. But he's got the right running style to get a piece. And I think my boy Jack is a horse, um, you know, we're going to want on our exotic tickets in the Kentucky Derby. So I hope I didn't um, bore you too much with the uh, with this, uh, with, with these comparisons. But um, he really, really strikes me as, uh, you know, the one horse this year. And there's years where there really isn't a true horse like this in the race, in my opinion. But one horse this year that's just, you know, that perfect one-dimensional closer. Uh, style is going to set up very well for the Kentucky Derby, not necessarily to win, but to fill out some exotic tickets. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. That's my recap of the Louisiana Derby.